Hello and welcome back to Bandit Lord. There we go. I actually remembered this time. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Okay, so we're actually here at Autengard. And uh, I know what you're thinking. What happened? What happened to uh, being in, you know, the Empire territory and trying to raid stuff? Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. I'm going to catch you up very, very quickly indeed. Didn't really do too much off screen. Basically just fought a bunch of bandits and uh, recruited some more units. As you can see, I'm actually at 36% HP at the moment because I literally just did a village raid um, at this place, Odrisa, right here. And I did get some hardwood from it. I basically got to about 20% on the bar and that's basically it. And then a lord came along and was basically like, oh, you better stop what you're doing, and so on. And so I ran away from him. He had 242 in his army, because it was actually a literal army that was running around. And, uh, and, and basically, otherwise, that's it. Uh, that, that's it. That's all, I've, that's all I've basically done. And then I went over to this, uh, this town over here because I was thinking to myself, oh, it might be a cool idea to do a tournament. And then I noticed that there wasn't a tournament there, so I then walked on over here. Now I actually noticed that there is a tournament back there, so <laughs> that didn't really work out too well for me. However, there is actually something pretty cool going on here. And uh, as you can see, we might very well be able to do a rival gang moving in. And I'm thinking that this be that this might be quite fun because we have done one of these before, and I think it might be quite cool to try to uh, make every gang leader or at least as many gang leaders as possible to be on our side, basically to be on our side. So what exactly do you want me to do? Okay, so three, yeah, I'll fight, I'll fight the other gang with you myself. Yeah, sure, why not? No problem at all. Okay, so. Apart from that, I actually thought it might be quite... Oh, yeah, I'm actually kind of injured, aren't I? That's a bit of an issue. Now, I was going to say, hey, maybe what we should do is fight these thugs in the back alley because um, that actually increases your relation with the gang leader by a significant margin. But as it stands, I am pretty low in HP and I don't really want to put myself in a situation where I could potentially be looted by the looters, you know, that we want to defeat. So I'm just going to rest up a little bit. I have been unable to find any uh, medicinal companions, which is actually kind of a shame. But I did find another companion who joined us, and he is a roguery companion, hilariously enough. So he's got a bit of a shady, shady air about him, so to speak. So he is probably going to be pretty cool for us. His name is Greveth the Shark. And I thought, hey, oh yeah, that seems like a pretty cool idea to me. Now, the one thing I have noticed is that bandit units are actually quite expensive to uh, upgrade. So these guys right here leveling up into armored brigands or armored raiders, they cost quite a bit. As you can see, this costs 175 and that costs 75. And that is just a tier 3, as far as I'm aware. Oh no, no. That, that, no, that actually goes straight up to tier 4. That's the reason why they're so expensive. Okay, so yeah, they go straight up to tier 4. And the Armored Brigands, they then go into Bandit Champions. And that costs 200 because that, that actually makes them tier 5 from tier 4. So that's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Very much like the modding community, as I have said multiple times. Oh, there is actually a caravan right there. I think we might be able to take the caravan on, especially the one with 32 only. Maybe we should do something about that. I am kind of, uh, I am kind of repaired now. Well, regenerated a little bit, so uh, might make sense. Shall we try it? I mean, they've got, uh, they've got six veteran caravan guards, but how good are the caravan guards? Probably not that good, right? Well, let's try it. Oh yes, I should probably also mention that uh, Bruce did level up, I think, once more, and uh, he did gain some more points in scouting, and I did get a, uh, I did get night vision. Basically, I decided to get night vision because I think we move fast enough during the day, and getting a 1% increase is probably not going to be that significant, but increasing our party speed a little bit more at night and giving us that 2% increase, I feel, is a bit better. But maybe that's just me. Anyway, I'm hopeful that we will be able to level up our scouting even further and actually get Navigator. I'm actually kind of unsure how scouting actually works because I've had a number of other 
characters that just do not level up scouting for whatever reason. I really don't know why they don't. Otherwise, I did level up my athletics, as is the case, because I'm moving around on the map on foot, and I got this, which is power kick, and that uh, does more kick damage, apparently. And then otherwise, we have tactics, which, uh, well, we're about to uh, level up. My um, roguery skill is about to level up as well. Not exactly what I want. Less relationship penalty while using intimidation. Don't really care about that too much. But this is pretty cool. 10% increased morale gain from raiding villages. More loot from enemies. And look at that. Can use any one-handed weapon in civilian mode. That sounds really fun. Also, a minus 20% chance of being caught while sneaking into towns. All of these things are going to be so incredibly useful for us when we finally return to the Empire and make them pay for what they've done. Oh yes. All right, so we are now going to be heading in here. And uh, I again, I, I don't care. I don't care whether these guys have a bad relation with us or anything like that, because we are hopefully going to do a decent job fighting here. So, it is, uh, it is a bit snowy. Uh, this is a pretty bad location for an infantry focused army, as you can no doubt tell. I mean, just look at look at how bad it is right now. It, there's just no no vantage point for us. I mean, we don't have any archers, as you can plainly see. We've literally just got infantry, and well, uh, as far as I'm aware, they don't even have any ranged weapons either. Oh yeah, speaking of ranged weapons, I actually did remove both of my throwing weapons because. Personally, I feel like if I'm going to use throwing weapons, I should probably be um, a little bit better at using the other weapons first, you know, because two-handed is probably going to be my bread and butter for the most part. And what I have at the moment is so incredibly low skill in it that it really makes no difference whatsoever for me to use throwing weapons right now. So we'll see what we can do. I'm going to get out my shield first. And um, we'll see how I can do here. I'm just going to make sure I know how to block everything. Oh, wow. Already? Did you seriously kill us from all the way over there? Okay. That's actually kind of problematic. That is problematic like no one's business. All right. Should I just tell my guys to charge? Uh, I'm kind of worried now. I'm kind of worried. Okay. Well, it seems like their cavalry is not really doing that much for us right now. Let's 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 do it. Let's just charge. Let's just charge straight on in here. See what we can do. There we go. A little bit of damage. A little bit of damage. And maybe some more. Maybe some more. Yes. There we go. Try and slice them all down. Slice them all down. That is exactly what we want. And uh, literally, I didn't even I didn't even need to block. I didn't even need to block. Yes, a jump and slash. Did you see that? A jump and slash. Wow, that's a that's a rarity nowadays. You know, considering they have made it uh, much more difficult to utilize jumping and attacking at the same time. Oh, we got murdered. I got murdered by a lance. That actually hurts quite a bit. Anyway, I hope my uh, infantry will actually do their thing now. But uh, this might be a bit problematic. I hope they will. Um, because I actually just told them to hold position, so I'm hopeful that they will just stay relatively close to each other and try and help each other out as much as they possibly can. Now bear in mind that I have been splitting my um, infantry upgrades, and so I haven't all been making them into bandit ironclads or anything like that, because if I make them, make them all into ironclads, they're going to turn into, well, basically pap papier-mâché, because it is going to remove their shield completely. As far as I'm aware, the uh, ironclads are solely two-handed users. And while that would be super fun, it really would be super fun to see a, a whole army of those guys running around, it is going to be very costly in the long run because they are extremely expensive to level up. We won't have that much counter to uh, enemy cavalry, and in general it is just not a very good idea to only have one singular type of unit and here we go there we go we're, we're stopping them we're stopping them very nice indeed look at that bandit champions those guys are going to be um, more than likely our main meat of the army so to speak because they're not the ones that really do damage they're more the ones that are capable of surviving a little bit more than a soft breeze you know so 
I'm hopeful that we'll be able to continue getting those guys and doing a bunch of damage with them too. So as you can see right here, we've got two deaths. Actually, not even that bad. We have armored brigands and bandit champions right here too. One of them each died, which is not exactly great. But look at that. We plundered a pretty decent amount of gold. We're going to get a massive amount of prisoners, which we can then end up selling. And, of course, on top of that, we have a whole bunch of other stuff too. I'm going to be taking those gloves because I desperately need some new gloves. Thank you. We've got some sheep here as well as a number of other wonderful goods. I will be taking that shield because I finally bought a shield, by the way. My shield, hilariously enough, um, initially was a makeshift shield that I literally just bought for about 60 dinars because I obviously thought that I, I mean, I'm not going to use it that much. It's basically just for absorbing a couple of, you know, hits on, from my back and that's basically it. So yeah, that's basically what I was using. Anyway, we're going to, we're going to take everything and then we're just going to do some auto equipping. Yeah, look at that. This guy can definitely use some new stuff and we're just going to swap out the horse. He could definitely use a shield as well because he's using a one-handed at the moment. So we're just going to give him that. And then Greveth will obviously be using a new torso. And I probably want to give him a shield too. So there you go. Oh, that's actually okay. <laughs> Apparently they both want the other shield that I, uh, than what I give them. That is kind of hilarious. And uh, we will probably swap out that as well. And then we'll get a long, fine steel spear. Because that's probably going to be a bit more effective than the other one when fighting cavalry. So that's pretty good to me. Otherwise, we have... Ah, here we go. Okay, so we now have... We now have to join the fight. Now, unfortunately, because I don't really have that much HP, it's probably going to be kind of difficult for me to participate in this fight. Really do want to, though, because I find it super fun to fight in the town streets. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, last time I did this, it went decently. And, uh, well, hopefully it will go <laughs> about the same this time. Oh my, hello there. You seem to have brought all of your twin brothers with you. <laughs> anyway, let's see what we can do. I gave my word, and I won't be bought. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to head in here as well myself, of course. I'm going to try and do some damage. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Nice damage. Yes. Can I get some more? Can I get some more, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, almost died. Almost died. Yes, got to be a bit careful. But uh, that's generally my uh, my thing, you know. I generally tend to go super hard offense because I don't have a huge amount of skill in defense. I'm talking about my own personal skill there, not not Bruce's skill. Because Bruce is yeah, he's he's kind of good, you know. He's okay. He's not um, he's not too much of a pushover. And uh, well. I won't say anything about myself, thank you. Anyway, that, that was a good fight as any of I had to take this pass. There we go. So 589, and we have increased our relation by 6, and we have reduced our relation by someone else. But that is absolutely fine, because we have to side with someone in each of these towns. And I'm hopeful that she'll have another task for us. Probably not very soon, but I'm hopeful she will have one in due time. Now, what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm probably primarily going to be having a bit of a base. And I know that uh, generally I shouldn't really have a base if I'm going to be a, a true bandit, you know, quote unquote. But here's the thing. I personally feel like having some allies in the form of some criminals in the underworld is probably going to help us out more often than not. So I think it would be a good idea to have some of those available to us. So I'm just going to sell a bunch of these things, 774. Then we're also going to be selling a bunch of wrought iron as well. And iron itself, we can sell some pottery. I could sell it Akalat for 65. Eh, I don't, I, personally, I don't think it's particularly worth it to go all the way over there. I can sell iron ore for a decent amount here and the steel as well so we now got 1700 we can sell the cotton and the fur and the sheep and the wool as well there we go all right so that's actually giving me 2200 that's pretty nice and bear in mind that there is a tournament over there as well somewhere in that direction so it might make sense for us to head over there relatively soon bear in mind that uh, we do have another couple of level ups going to continue going for those armored brigands i personally feel like they're going to be the best for us. These bushwhackers, unfortunately, do 
level up into freebooters and then forest bandits and then batanians so i'm not entirely sure whether it's even worth me leveling this bushwhacker up to be honest so probably just going to spend that there and we will just oh look at that 2100 level up our roguery skill a little bit there too and who's this guy all right yeah i'm not going to be taking him he doesn't have any roguery skill doesn't have any medic skill or anything like that so nothing really to worry about there now i am going to be using the more raiding mod again um but i was hopeful that i could potentially level up my roguery skill enough to actually get us to the point where we could have a minus 20 percent chance of being caught while sneaking into towns personally i feel like this is so incredibly important so i'm thinking that we will try that and wow camouflage seems really good you can escape from a captivity 30 percent faster yeah okay that's that's kind of hilarious for that to be a 200 skill level trait uh not entirely sure um if that's really that good for such a late time but i guess if you have a high roguery skill oh there's hurunag i actually do want to speak to him about the uh, um about the quest so can you tell me anything about this i was there many of the crusades went mostly the kurjit clan who were hungry for glory but i was also young and hungry for glory so i went along as well the batanians had planned an ambush and up in a wooded pass for the imperial vanguard then the vlandians and sturgeons were to come sweeping down on their flanks in the battle our scouts found the batanian ambush but noretzes did not listen and blundered into it anyway while Noretzes' vanguard was getting slaughtered, we met with the, we met the Vlandians even. But the Vlandians brought lots of crossbowmen, and our horse archers took heavy losses. Oh, there you go. He's actually telling us a really, really nice counter to horse archers. Apparently, crossbowmen is the way to go. Anyway, eventually the armored imperial cataphracts showed up and rolled over the crossbows. But we were caught in a melee with the Vlandian knights, and that was where things got bloody. We won. Barely, with the help of the Imperials, but the Kurgits were mauled. Since then, the Kurgits have been rather weak, and you know what happens to the weak. Still, no one told them to put all their eggs in one basket like that. Alright. Uh, yeah, so, um, a little bit of an update on the mod front. There is actually a mod capable of completing this particular quest immediately upon you uh, loading into the game because some people have found it a bit annoying to uh, find all of the nobles again and again and again and that's actually very true you know i feel like it's a nice idea to potentially be able to skip it if you have already done it once and uh, or a couple of times dependent on uh, you know dependent on what you're doing and and so on so that's actually a pretty cool mod that i might take for some future playthroughs if they keep the quest the same way there's actually another hmm, there's actually another caravan here i might like to prey upon this caravan once again because i think we got a pretty decent didn't we get a decent amount of cash from it i'm actually unsure about that right now i'm thinking i'm thinking maybe yes or i'm thinking maybe no oh yeah by the way my clan did level up just now which is pretty cool because that means i have another three spaces for companions i can actually create parties out of them now as well which might actually make sense but on the one hand i would like to have them in my party just literally because they are so incredibly uh good at what they do i mean graveth is not exactly great let's face it his combat skills are not great his roguery skill is okay but the main reason why i wanted him is because he kind of suits the bandit theme a little bit more than uh, the other things but anyway we're gonna just order a whole bunch of these guys let's get let's get a load let's get a load and uh, then we will probably go and get a little bit of food here my food is just going like no one's business look at this i've only got 39 and i just spend a thousand what that is actually kind of crazy. You know what? I'm actually going to go in the tournament, earn a little bit of extra cash here because I feel like the only thing that I might be able to really do as a bandit with the exception of raiding and so on, because obviously raiding at the moment is probably not going to be the safest option, especially considering uh, when you do the, the native raids or the base game raids, a vassal is just going to come out of nowhere if they're not at war against other people. That's the main problem that I have so far seen with raiding. It is going to be doable later down the line when I actually have a decent sized army that I can actually use to good effect. 
But as it stands right now, because I obviously do not have that. Ow! Are you serious? That hurt. That hurt. That hurt a whole bunch. But I have a load of damage right here. And hopefully I will be able to murder. There we go. <laughs> Jame the Golden. Okay. Well, you are uh, you are you are murdered. Thank you very much. My poor arm skill is leveling up like no one's business. Uh, is incredibly low at the moment anyway, so there is that. Anyway, I'm just going to make two bets, and I think that's going to be it for the amount of bets that I will make now. Bear in mind that I don't have any riding skills, so my riding skill is awful. There, it is, it, there's no way, there's no way around it. It is just awful. So, I guess I can just use this as an opportunity to maybe get a level or something like that, because the more skill-ups that I get, the more level-ups I get. So, might make sense. Uh, maybe I can use that double tap W thing now because I know that a bunch of people have been telling me about the uh, the double tap of the horses and the the more subtle ways that you can control your mount and things like that. Personally, I don't feel like it makes that much of a difference. Is it just me? Because uh, maybe I'm just using it wrong or something. I don't know. But usually, if I'm going to be playing a mounted character, that doesn't really help me that much. Look, there we go. There's the stopping. The stopping actually would be quite useful I think but I feel like the uh, the speed up thing the speed up function probably not going to be exceptionally good uh, at least for me but maybe may, uh, maybe it will be helpful at some point in the future anyway I'm just going to try and see if I can maybe take him down there we go we're, we're, we're fighting dirty you know we're fighting dirty right here because let's face it I am a bandit and <laughs> and Bruce certainly wants to win this as soon as possible wait a minute do I have Wait a minute, did I, did I, what? That wasn't the final round? I actually thought that was the final round for a second. Okay, apparently it wasn't. So I guess I will just have to do this again. This is going to be kind of harsh. Oh, okay. I am kind of worried about this, to be honest. Oh, I was going for the head. Ooh, okay, yeah. This guy might actually have my number right here. Oh, no, never mind. 32 damage, that's pretty good. Nice. Oh, shit. 69. What is with me and 69 damage? I don't know. Apparently it happens more often than I even could have imagined. <laughs> ah, there you go. Anyway, that's a pretty decent amount. And we got an Eastern Fine Steel Mace. That might be quite good. That might be quite good. Let's take a look. And let's see exactly where it is. There it is. Okay, yeah, so it's a one-handed. Is it better than what I'm currently wearing for our other guys? Yeah, it's actually better than what, what he has. So he will use that instead. And we will now go and uh, chase after these fellows. Let's have a look and see if anyone needs to level up. No, no one needs to level up, of course. So let's go and see if we can chase these guys down. Bear in mind that my uh, forest speed did actually help me to escape from the uh from from another group of um pretty strong lords as well earlier on in my off-screen time so it's pretty cool to see that uh, the trait actually does help a little bit it gives you literally like where is it now there we go Batanian forest agility so it gives me 0 0.14 which i gotta say is not exactly great oh now i, I have apparently lost the caravan can you believe that yeah you probably can <laughs> my athletic skill is far from good and does make things a little bit tricky and oh wait a minute yeah I actually wanted to show you this as well this functionality with the hideout this is exactly what can happen here it's pretty amazing right yeah you can actually recruit some actual hero units I don't know what these hero units are all about but you can recruit a bandit squad for 500 as well I'm actually just going to recruit a bandit squad and actually see what they're all about because I've never done this before, and I think it would be quite fun. Ah, okay, okay. So, you can get hidden pawns from here. You can get bandit novice scoundrels, young wolves as well, which level up into seasoned wolves. And then they go to chosen wolves. There are a whole bunch of extra, um, extra characters here, which you can recruit, which is actually very, very fun. I'm going to get rid of the horse thief. Uh, actually, am I? <laughs> am I because they actually do level up into some pretty decent units maybe I should just keep them around but unfortunately as you can see here I kind of have a bit of an issue with that um you know what let's just get rid of some of our bandit brigands just to go down to 75 
But that, that's actually really cool. So yeah, you can actually recruit from bandit hideouts, which I think is probably one of the most powerful things you can do with the bandit lord mod, with the exception of obviously having every single lord be able to, uh, every single lord, no, every single bandit unit being able to advance in level and indeed upgrade into stronger units along the way. I think that's very cool. Anyway, let's see if we can uh, maybe prey upon some weakened vassals, because I personally feel like we have a pretty... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say strong. I'm not going to use the word strong here, because I personally do not believe we are that strong at the moment, but I would say that we're, we're doing all right. You know, we're doing all right. I do have 3,500 gold, however, which is really not very good. So... I don't want to loot grain. That's the thing. I really don't want to loot grain. You know what? I'm looting grain. Yeah, I'm looting grain because here's the thing. Even if the actual supply or production of that particular village is not exactly what you would want from it, you know, because let's face it, we all want the silver ore. We all want the iron ore and stuff like that. We all want that. But the thing is, is that if I... Oh, wow. That was really bad. But yeah, anyway, the thing is, is that if I don't do any raiding whatsoever, I am never, ever going to be able to level up my roguery skill. And that's going to be the biggest problem that I'm going to face. Do you think I can catch up to this guy? Come on now. Get him, Bruce. Get him. <laughs> can you imagine the sight? The sight that someone would have to have to literally look at this guy and be like, Oh, look at that guy. He's got a massive two-handed sword and he's running after Fred. Look, look at him, he's running after Fred. I can't believe it, Fred, run! And yeah, and so you're literally wanting to, you, you know, I would kind of want this guy to get away, but I kind of want to level up my two-handed weapon proficiency. So I'm gonna just, <laughs> oh, he didn't even level up. He didn't even level up, oh, of course, of course. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> Poor Fred, don't worry. There's another thousands, you know, thousands and thousands of Freds out there. We have another opportunity to, uh, <laughs> say hi to Fred in the future. Poor guy, really. Poor guy. Okay, well, whatever the case, I am going to be taking these things. No one else needs any upgrades or anything like that, so that's absolutely fine. And now we can raid this. Now, I am going to have a bit of a difficulty here, so if someone does appear, then it might very well be the case that I'll have to end the raid almost immediately without me getting anything, but I'm hopeful that I will be able to get a little bit of roguery skill, just like two... I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Can, 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 you, can you get me to 50? Can you get me to 50? Because bear in mind, there's only two exits from this particular village. Actually, might, there might be three. Um, so if I can... Okay, I'm going to pause the game immediately upon someone coming out of the woodwork. And we're looting a huge amount of grain right now, which is actually kind of good because I need the, uh, I need the food. Aha, there's the other guy that was actually chasing us before. Okay, I think we actually did a pretty decent raid right here. This is the most successful raid that I have ever had, <laughs> believe it or not. Okay, so I've got 81 grain. What's going on with this? What? What's, uh, what's, ah, days until no food. Okay, yeah, mm. okay, okay, so here's the thing. I was actually thinking to myself, what's going on? With my, with my food supplies, because it's not going up. And you know what the reason is? Bannerlord tweaks. That's all you need to know, basically, but I'm gonna explain a little bit further. Bannerlord tweaks, basically, as far as I'm aware, that is the mod that's doing it. But anyway, basically what it does is it consolidates your food supplies into a more tangible number. So in other words, it's not going to tell you how much food you have, it's going to tell you how much food you have for how many days. You see, so that's that's what's actually happening there. And that makes a big, big difference, in my opinion, to its uh, its functionality. And that's the reason why I have 41, because I have 41 days remaining of food, which is fantastic, in my opinion. I think that's a really, really nice way of doing things. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what to spec into now. Oh, I guess I will take commanding presence, less relationship penalty and so on and i guess i'll just spec into more tactics because being able to retreat from battles is going to be so incredibly important for us 
And I guess I will just spec into more cunning. Should I spec into more cunning? It does increase learning rate, doesn't it? Um, as far as I'm aware, it does... Yes, it makes it easier to learn bound skills. So I'm going to continue to get uh, cunning for the moment because I want to level up tactics as fast as possible and roguery as fast as possible. And that might be the reason why my scouting is actually leveling up as well because I'm getting so much, so much cunning, which I got to say is pretty good. But um, yeah, <laughs> the raiding is not paying my bills, suffice it to say. It is not paying my bills whatsoever. So I guess I'm going to join another tournament because... I don't really know how else I can get money unless I try to sneak in to a town and do it from there. You know what I would love to see with the Bandit Lord mod? I would love to see the ability to create some kind of bandit hideout yourself. In other words, an actual camp where you can leave your units, kind of like a makeshift garrison sort of thing. I don't know how effective or how... Well, should we say, I don't know how doable that is going to be in the short term, but I assume someone is going to come up with it later down the line. But um, yeah, if the mod creator or, you know, of Bandit Lord is watching this, then please, I, I, I would be uh, overjoyed to have a situation where I could actually build my own Bandit hideout. Because if I could do that, I could leave all my units in my Bandit hideout and I could go by myself with a couple of my companions and sneak into the town much, much easier because I can assume that the sneaking um, percentage is determined by your, um, by your roguery and how big your army currently is. So that's going to be something that I would definitely like to see. And maybe, maybe it will happen, you know? Maybe it will happen. I think it would be pretty cool. I'm going to be a bit careful here because I do have my forces helping me quite considerably, so I don't really need to put myself in massive danger considering I also do have a pretty significant amount of damage already taken. So let's be a bit careful here. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, apparently I don't need to worry. Uh, okay. Wow, they actually did fantastically. I'm a bit worried about coming... Oh dear, coming against this guy. Oh no. We might have some issues here. Okay, so I have a spear. And they're on the yellow team, by the way, so... Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. Okay. I'm kind of surprised. Oh no. Oh no, I've got too much athletics. Yeah, that's the issue right now that I'm having. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I have too much athletics, what? I'm not entirely sure what to do because when I was doing the uh, Kuzate tournaments on Byron, he had nothing in athletics basically. He's, he's just literally the worst when it comes to athletics. His riding skill is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but his athletics is awful. And so as a result, doing these tournaments and being able to run around at such a significant speed is unheard of for me, so it is um, kind of <laughs> going to take a little bit to get used to. Oh my. Okay, hello. Ah. Yes, nice. Nice in the head. Very nice. Okay, come on now. I'm going to just try and face this guy away from my friend over there, and then hopefully he can kill him. Yeah, nice, nice. Get him. Get him. You can do this. Yes. Okay, I'm going to try and be a bit careful. Ah, oh, no, never mind. Oh no! My guy! My guy is dead! That is awful! Tynops of the hand. Wow. Okay, I actually kind of thought that I would um, die there, but apparently not. Kind of wish I had a different weapon. <laughs> but I have so much... What is my... Look at this! I am literally running away from him faster by backpedaling. Well, kind of. A little bit. But uh, yeah. Uh, athletic skill, everyone. Apparently it is a very, very powerful ability, especially in tournaments. Seems extremely powerful indeed. Alright, so uh, yeah, this is the final round. Not going to complain about getting a spear and a shield this time, that's for sure, because I was complaining quite quite a lot with Byron. But that is to be expected, because we have such a small amount of athletic skill. It really makes it quite difficult. Yes. Yes. Okay, one damage. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Wonderful, wonderful one damage from Bruce right there. But there you go. A wonderful victory. And uh, what did we actually even get? Oh, a plumed fur-lined helmet. Okay, personally, <laughs> I don't really mind about the plumed 
helmet at all. I think that it probably isn't going to be super good for us. But let's actually just take a look. Maybe I'm making fun of it without actually knowing whether it's any good first. It is actually quite good. And I look like, well, kind of a funny guy now. Yeah, kind of, kind of. But anyway, that will be it for this episode. Next time, we are going to be heading back to Southern Empire territory. I was thinking to myself, who are we at war against again? Yeah, so we're at war against the Southern Empire. And we are going to try and sneak in. Or at the very least, I will try to do a couple of fights in the village themselves because bear in mind that you can also use the more raiding mod inside the village too anyway i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time